Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to BARC TV, live on this Bank Holiday Monday afternoon from a fine and sunny Donington Park. We had one race before the lunch break this morning, and we're going to get back underway very shortly with the second of our races on the programme here today from the Classic Touring Car Racing Club. Also alongside them, the Kumho BMWs and the Jaguar Saloon and GT Championship as well. Dave Goddard here taking you through the action live on Facebook and YouTube. There'll be plenty of highlights played out on TV on uh, free sports coming up in the coming weeks as well. The next race on our programme will be for the Jaguar Enthusiast Club Saloon and GT Championship. The big cats running combined with the Shell Oils Pre-83 Touring Cars. And they are in the assembly area waiting to uh, get underway now. But uh, before we go into that race, we got some interviews with some of our big cat tamers, some of the Jaguar racers, a little earlier on. All right, we're James Rand of the Jaguar Enthusiast Club. James, it's a, it's a lovely day. We only ever seem to see you in sunshine. It was sunny at Silver, still it's sunny here at Donington. And we're just looking forward to being back out in it. Oh, I was doing a rain dance, really. Uh, I, I like the wet, and it's a bit of a bit of a problem for the more powerful cars. So I was kind of praying for rain, but it's, it didn't work. So, uh, But, uh, yeah fortuitously on pole so really pleased yeah it didn't seem to affect you in uh, in your qualification this morning how did you find the track out there donnington a little bit different to silverstone in many ways but seems to be going all right for you at least yeah there's a few more uh well silverstone's a bit of a point and squirt whereas donnington there's a you're always doing something in a car um and I, I like this place so yeah it went very well car feels good um you see it starting at the right sort of place to be finishing at the best sort of place so fingers crossed and you mentioned to me before we just started speaking about you've been doing a lot of work to the car. What, what's, what's, been the prog what's been the progress through the last few weeks? The, the Royal Wii. I've had quite a lot of help as well uh, from the likes of uh, Gary Davis and uh, Richard Berg at Redline Tuning. Yeah, they've got me back out. Um, uh, yeah, there's, there was a bit of a question mark over the uh, head gasket at Silverstone. And uh, that's my excuse for not coming first. Um, so, yeah, the head came off, wipe it was off. It had a bit of a refresh. So, yes. Yeah, back in it back together and uh, yeah the car feels really good and back to its best on pole for this afternoon best luck thank you very much hopefully i'll be speaking to you later cheers Cheers, All right, Guy Con, you with the Jaguar Enthusiast. This is a, it's a lovely beast that you're uh, standing behind. Uh, how much are you looking forward to getting out on track this afternoon? Really am, yeah. Can't wait to get going. Uh, conditions are fine, weather's fine. Um, just about right temperature, I think. Uh, probably maybe a little bit warmer for the car itself, but warm enough for the driver. So, uh, no, looking forward to it. And talk us through it, because it, it's a beautiful looking thing. I'm yeah. sure it sounds even better as well. What's it like to drive? It's an absolute beast. It is. It goes really well. Um, yeah, it does light up the rear. It's a replica of uh, Bob Toulis, who run them in America in the Group 44. So that's all like a nod to him. Uh, but no, it's only just been on track last year and now this year to just really get going in it. So looking forward to it. And am I right in thinking you weren't with us at Silver since this is your first ride out of the year? Indeed, yeah. It wasn't ready then, so now we get going. And how much are you looking forward to being back? It's been a while, right? Yeah, it has. No, really excited. Obviously, with everything going on and the pandemic and everyone not being able to do what they want to do. But, yeah, we're lucky to be able to come out and race and hopefully we get you know a full season in and get going in it. Well, we can't wait to watch you, mate. Best luck. All right. Thanks very much. All right, with Michael Holt, head of the Jaguars Enthusiasts Club. Michael, this is a, this is a beautiful looking car. The livery in particular is, is particularly uh, outrageous, I want to say. How much, uh, how much effort has gone into getting this one track ready? Because it looks amazing. Uh, well, we finished sort of last year, and obviously with COVID and what have you, but um, we ended it, um, and this is a, a new shell, actually. So it, it's six months' work. Um, so, yeah. It was, a, it was a entertaining Christmas and New Year, put it that way. Yeah, it's been, it's been fun. It's been fun. And, uh, and how much are you looking forward to driving out there this afternoon? Conditions couldn't be more perfect as we stand here right now. Well, I do like it a bit moist, but... So today's not perfect for me, I'll be honest. But, um, no, we're, we're going to give it a great shot. It's great to be out with the Jags again and the pre-83s. And uh, we had a, a good time at Silverstone. The car was, had a few niggles. We sorted those out today, hopefully, and really can't wait to get out there again. Yeah, Silverstone was the first race back for everyone, it seemed. Did we, how much did you learn about this car at, at that race in particular? Um, it, again, it was just like a shakedown, really, um, just, to, just, just, just to see what it was up to and, and how it changed, because I had an XT entered before. It was exactly the same. So Colin Philpott from Powerbell, who built the car for me and uh, did a fantastic job. I have to really thank him for that. 
And um, it was just great just to get out there, meet everybody again and just have a couple of beers, to be honest. So oh. we're looking forward to it again today. Well, I wish you all the very best of luck. Thank you very much. Cheers. Have a good one. Well, good to hear a couple of our big cat tamers there in the paddock. And we get ready for the uh, second race of our coverage, the Jaguar Saloon GT Championship combined with the Shell Oils Pre-83 touring cars. A little bit of clearing up being done on track at the moment before the cars head out onto track. We can give you the uh, grid for this next race. In pole position, it will be number one, James Ram, the reigning Jaguar Series champion. And alongside him, number 67, Colin Philpott, his first appearance of the season in his XJS. The second row, the reigning pre-83 touring car champion, which is Mike Luck with his BMW E21. And alongside him is another man we just heard from, Guy Conyu, number 44, with his Jaguar XJS. Row three, another Jaguar, but this one is running in the pre-83 touring cars. David Howard with his XJ12 and number 18, Mark Lukock. He's in a Mark 1 Escort. The fourth row, number 24, Michael Seaborn with his Jaguar XJ40 alongside Derek Pierce with the more modern XK8. On row five, number seven, Tom Lenthal. He's in a Jaguar XJS, Derek Pierce's teammate. And number 81, Mark Chollerton. He's in a Mark 2 Escort. Row six is Michael Holt, number 11 with his Jag. And number four, Simon Jeffs with his Volkswagen Golf. On the seventh row, 49, Mark Osborne, the Welshman with his uh, Triumph Dolomite Sprint, starts alongside uh, Richard Coppock in uh, number 27. So it's uh, Richard driving that car, not Charles Coppock. In the Jaguar XJS. Uh, alongside, uh, uh, on row eight rather, we've got number 67. That's not Colin Philpott, hit, that's uh, Stephen Primet. In car 67, we've got a number clash there, unfortunately. Stephen Primet in his uh, Mark 1 Escort starts alongside the XJS of Rick Walker. The ninth row, 28, Daniel Stewart, also in an XJS. And number 97, which is Graham Smith in his Ford Escort Mark 1. He had some problems in qualifying. Hopefully we'll uh, see him out for this one. The tenth row, number 46, which is David Hickton. And he's in his new Opel Cadet, a new built car for this season, alongside number 139. Late entry on the programme, Chris Boone with his Jaguar, the former Jaguar champion, on row 10. The 11th row, number 5, Simon Dunford. Number 5, the best of the road standard Jaguars. Starts alongside number 58. Again, a number clash there. 58, uh, that is Steve Curtin with his Opel Ascona. Not uh, Derek Pierce. Row 12, we've got 45, David Ringham. And uh, number 28, that number 28 is Alan Wayman with the Chevrolet Camaro. Row 13, 92, Michael Atkinson, Jaguar, 296, Johnny Horsfield. He's in an Alfa Romeo uh, GTV. Row 14, 641, Peter Millington with his little Hillman Avenger. And number 50, Matthew Davis, whose Jaguar caught fire after a collision in the first round at Silverstone. He's in a different car for this weekend in a Jaguar XJ40. The penultimate row, number 6, Anton Martin. He's in a Ford Escort Mark III. And number 80, Gary Fletcher with his Vauxhall Firenze. And at the back of the field, 64 Keith Evans with his Alpha Sud. And watch out for fireworks from the final row. Number four is not Simon Jeffs, that is Tom Robinson. Double winner in the Jaguars at Silverstone. And his XJR, his XJR saloon is at the back of the field here. He had problems in qualifying and will be starting last. He is there. Watch for him coming through the field as this race goes on. So a real mixture of... Um, different cars this one sorry that some of the names are incorrect on our uh, grid sheet there but uh, the uh, number clash is playing a bit of havoc with our graphics so in pole position it is James Ram the man from Dunmo in Essex in car number one the reigning Jaguar saloons champion starting alongside 67 Colin Philpott another former champion he's in class C for the slightly less uh, modified Jaguars Second row, Mike Luck in the BMW, the reigning pre-83 champion. And alongside him, 44, as Guy Conyu explained, his XJS, a replica of the car raced by Bob Tullius in uh, the USA in Trans Am racing and IMSA racing as well. It really is a very beautiful car, that one. I uh, saw it make its debut here at Donington at the end of last year. Uh, David Howard will be a favourite in the pre-83s in his Jaguar. XJ12. I think Matthew Davis has switched to running pre-83 this weekend as well with the Jaguar XJ40 further back on the grid after his XJR had that fire at Silverstone. 
Green flag is displayed at the back of the grid then. This will be a 15 minute race. I think they'll head round for a green flag lap. First of all, just to get some heat into their tyres. Nice little heat haze on the grid you can see here at uh, Donington Park. Okay, the green flag waves, the green flag lap gets underway from the uh, new starting gantry here at Donington for this season. There's James Ram and Colin Phil Pott at the front of the grid. Mark Lucock is there with his uh, escort. Derek Pierce in the XK8. There's Simon Jeffs in the Golf. Chris Boone, he's in XJ40. And there is Matthew Davis, the black car, in a backup car this weekend. And there at the back, he's caught a glimpse of Tom Robinson there, number four. Keep an eye on him coming through. It's James Ram on the front of the grid, the owner of Comsec Investigations, ahead of the Powerbell Motorsport car of uh, Colin Philpott. Michael Seaborn, well up in the Castrol livery XJ40 Jaguar there. Graham Smith is there with the yellow escort. The red uh, Opal Cadet there, the new build of David Hickton. Used to race the Asconans further back in the pack. Steve Curtin now at the wheel of that. I think that's the same car anyway. There at the back of the field, number 64, that's Keith Evans with his lovely little Alfa Romeo Alfa Sud. Lovely variety of uh, 70s and early 80s machinery, mixing it with the big cats. They started from separate grids at uh, Silverstone, but mixed in together for Donington. There's Derek Pierce, Tom Lenthal, Mark Cholerton in his uh, escort Mark II, Mark Osborne, former champion, and Stephen Primet, a few former champions in this field in the pre-83s. There's David Hickton's new Opal. Some very beautiful cars indeed. So I'll come up to the grid, this will be a standing start, only the classic Thunder cars using rolling starts. There's that Group 44 Jag of Guy Conyu. That is a, such a lovely looking car. So will it be a Jag or a pre-83 touring car that wins overall then? They have their own championships to fight for, of course. James Ram was beaten by Tom Robinson at uh, Silverstone, so he wants an overall win here. Al Wayman, the veteran campaigner from Watford in his Camaro IROC Z28. Gary Fletcher in the Vauxhall Firenze there, the Jerry Marshall look-alike. So the Marshalls pull them into line on the grid then. What a fine field of pre-83 touring cars supported by Shell Oils and the Jaguar Enthusiasts Club Saloon and GT Championship. Tom Lenthal's got the door open on his XJS trying to keep cool. That's a few cars. Michael Holt uh, waving his door as well. They're all trying to cool themselves down on this grid. It is pretty warm here at Donington. This will be a 15 minute race. That's a couple of cars into light at the back. Once the marshal at the back of the grid is happy, he will display the green flag and then it'll be over to the start marshals once the clerk of the course gives the all clear. Marshals just make their final inspection. The green flag is waved at the back of the grid. Drivers, close your doors because we're about to go racing. Waiting for the red lights to come on on the gantry. They do so. Once they go out, the race will be underway over 15 minutes. Away they go. Jaguars and pre-83s underway. Decent start down the outside by Guy Conyu. Good start by Simon Jeffs in the golf as well. Fair bit of smoke from Al Wayman's Camaro, but it's James Ram who's got the lead in Jaguar number one into the first corner at Reggae. Colin Philpott in second place, side by side for third. Mike Luck, the former Clubman sports car racer on the inside. And yes, that smoke looks pretty terminal for Al Wayman. He was smoking a bit in qualifying, a lot more so now. 
So James Ram down the Craner Curves has the lead ahead of Colin Philpotts. Third place is Guy Conyu, Mike Luck in the BMW, the first of the pre-83 touring cars, ahead of David Howard, Michael Seaborn, Mark Lucock, and the rest of them. Here they come then up towards McLean's. James Ram, the man from Essex, leads the way. Colin Philpotts in second place in the 67. Mark Lucock challenging Michael Seaborn there, the blue Mark One escorts. Wait and see how long Alan Wayman's Camaro survived. That was very smoky off the line towards the back of the field as uh, Tom Lenthor getting a charge on the inside. All oh, three wide through uh, Coppice there. Hopefully they survive that. Tom Robinson's already made up about four or five places, at least from the back of the field. Leaders head into the chicane. Mark Lucock has survived that. Tom Lenthor did make up those two places. Number seven, he's going well in his XJS early on. They stream their way through. James Ram leads as they complete the first lap then. Colin Philpott in second. David Howard making a challenge here on the inside of the red BMW of Mike Luck. Here's the battle further back in the midfield. Mark Lucock under fire from Michael Seaborn, the big XJ40 on the inside. Derek Pierce in the XK8, one of few, only one or two XK8s racing in the UK in behind them there. Al Wayman is heading for the pits, I can tell you. That Camaro has gone up in smoke. Oh, and look at Mike Luck very sideways there. There's the Camaro heading for the pit lane, as we mentioned. But Mike Luck uh, nearly lost it. I wonder if there's a bit of oil gone down from the uh, Al Wayman Camaro there. They were a bit sideways down the Craner curves. Here come the leaders, and Guy Conyu very sideways there. He's really flinging that uh, XJS around in third place. Luck in fourth, Lenthal fifth. It's uh, James Ram who has got the lead. I reckon there is a little bit of fluid down, you know. They seem to be sliding around a lot, or maybe just... Uh, trying to get heat into their tyres here. It is a warm day. Away goes James Ram. He's pulled out quite a healthy lead here over the second place, number 67 of Colin Philpott. Conyu in third place. And uh, Tom Lenthal's collected one of the marker boards, so he's cut a corner somewhere. Mike Holt with a big lock-up there in his XJ6 into the chicane. Yes, the oil flag is out there. Al Wayman has dropped some oil. You can see on the, uh, just see on the left of the picture there, the red and yellow striped flag, that's the oil flag. Somebody's gone off to the outside of the chicane there, didn't see who it was. Look at this down the main straight, Mark Osborne dodging about in the Triumph Dolomite Sprint behind Mark Lucock and Mark Chollerton's escorts. They've dropped back a bit, those two. Lucock was further up, he's lost a couple of places, so it's Ram from Philpott. David Howard and Guy, uh, Guy Conyu and David Howard next in the order. Tom Lenthal's in there as well. Then it's Mike Luck in the BMW. One or two drivers being caught out by a bit of fluid down on the circuit. There's Pierce, Holt, Lucock, Osborne, Cholerton next in that group. And there is Tom Robinson. Now, where was he up to at the end of the second lap from the back of the field? He's up to 16th in the big Jaguar XJR6. James Ram leads, though. Is his old foe from Silverstone going to come through? It looks like the brake lights might be stuck on on the XJS there. Continues to set the pace. He was over three seconds clear of Colin Philpott at the end of lap two. See what the gap is this time through. Philpott under fire from Guy Conyu for uh, second place. Mike Luck is still leading the pre-83 touring car split in his BMW in sixth. Michael Holtz has got past Derek Pierce a bit further back. And uh, very sideways at the chicane. I can tell he was Michael Seaborn that time through. As Colin Philpott holds second ahead of Guy Conyu. Rams away and clear. Colin Philpott pulling away slightly now in second place. Leading the pre-83 touring cars is still Mike Luck in sixth overall behind David Howard and Tom Lenthal. Two Opals are battling it out further back in the order. David Hickton and uh, Steve Curtin. There is Colin Philpott, the former champion in the Powerbell Motorsport XJS. 
Down the straight they come. The oil flag's still out there, warning the drivers of a slippery surface, the red and yellow striped flag. They're coming up to lap Matthew Davis. Here is Michael Seabob way sideways. Look at that, and he goes off into the gravel. He's all over the place in that uh, XJS, XJ40 rather, ploughing through the gravel there, Michael Seaborn. He's been sideways virtually the whole race. I don't know if that's oil or whether there's something wrong with the car because it's fishtailing about all over the place there. Leaders are lapping Matthew Davis in his XJ. The Vista's being in an XJ40 today, I'm not sure if uh, that is. No, that's an XJ6 saloon he's in, I think. Prepared by the Swallows Motorsport team, who also run Tom Robinson's car. Now, where is Tom up to? Just looking at down the order. Up to 14th now, we'll look for him as he comes through the uh, XJR6. He's just coming down the Craner curves now. Yes, there is Tom Robinson making his way up the order from the back. Richard Coppock behind him, but Michael Seaborn is down with him now. There is the Bob Tullius replica of Guy Conyu. Extraordinary looking car that one is. The Trans Am XJS. James Ram continues to lead. Coming up to half distance in his 15 minutes uh, sprint for the Shell Sports uh, Pre-83 touring cars. There's their former champion Stephen Primet. He's running down in 13th at the moment with the Jaguars. Guy Conyu having a look for second place here, going down towards Redgate. Michael Holt runs wide onto the grass in the background. Tom Lenthal still with that bit of debris stuck on the front of his car. It might cause him some cooling issues, you can see there. Looks like somebody's thrown paint over it, doesn't it? And Guy Conyu has got through for second place into Redgate ahead of Colin Philpott. Conyu in Class D, Philpott in Class C, so he's still leading his class here, the 67 car. Leader comes up towards uh, McLean's, James Ram. David Howard still ahead of Mike Luck. That's uh, a change for the lead. In fact, in uh, pre-83, David Howard's got ahead. There's the uh, Ford Escort of Anton Martin, a former Bangor racer in the Red Escort, chasing Peter Millington's Hillman Avenger towards the back of the pack. And there's uh, number 92, Michael Atkinson, the Green Jaguar, making a move on David Hickton's old car, the number 58 uh, Opal, driven by Steve Kurt. One of the two Opals in this race. There are the leaders. The lead gap is up to 4.4 seconds now, six laps down. Somebody off at the chicane. Michael Holt has gone off in the number 11. There he is. He's buried it in the gravel, banging the steering wheel in frustration. Michael Holt's in the gravel, right on the exit of the chicane. That could bring out the safety car. Just went in too deep there into the chicane as he tried to slide it back out. He's hit the gravel. He is furious with himself, Michael Holt. He was running in... Uh, about sixth or seventh place, that car. We'll uh, try and get a replay of uh, the Jag as the marshals run forward to try and push him out. Let's have a look at uh, what happened there. Oh, he locked up big style on the ex entry to the chicane, ran out wide. He tried to turn it back. He was a little too eager as he tried to rejoin there, Michael Holt, in the number 11, and dropped into the gravel. The last, the last thing... Uh, you want to do there is put your foot down but you do it instinctively and bury the car in the gravel you can see him thumping the steering wheel there in anger Michael Holt furious with himself so the marshals are trying to recover Michael Holt this yellow flags out of the chicane there is the leader James Ram comes through now we've got five minutes or just over five minutes of the race still to go Coming down towards Redgate Corner. James Ram has won uh, many times here at Donington with Alex JS in the past. Guy Conny has got clear of uh, Colin Philpott into second place. There's 139 Chris Boone, the former Jaguar champion. We normally see him in uh, an XJ in an XK8 these days, at the in the XJ40 this time. 
There's Rick Walker in the uh, emerald green Jaguar, similar to the Jaguar Formula One team's colours in the early 2000s. There is number 139, Chris Boone, in the Cov Cats. XJ40 won the title about three years ago in the XK8. There's Michael Seaborn on his recovery drive after going off, and he's got Tom Robinson ahead of him there in number four, coming through the field after those problems in qualifying. So battles everywhere you look in this uh, The Alfa Romeo GTV there, number 296, Johnny Horsfield, beautifully turned out. Behind them, the uh, Avenger of Peter Millington and Anton Martin in the Mark III Escorts. It's a close battle in the pre-83 touring cars, just coming through the chicane onto the uh, Wheatcroft straight now which is uh, David Howard and Mike Luck. They're fighting for the lead of the pre-83 cars. Here's a battle further back behind them. Mark Cholerton, the Norfolk-based builder in his uh, Mark II Escort RS2000, being chased by Stephen Primmett. We normally see them at the sharp end of the pre-83s, battling in the pack this time, behind Simon Jeffs in the Golf. Beautiful-looking car, the Richard Lloyd tribute Akai Hi-Fi Golf. They've got the two Tom Lenthal run Jags ahead of them. The uh, recovery vehicle in there, the telehandler to pull Michael Holt's Jaguar out of the gravel. They're doing that without the need for the safety car. It's good from the marshals. Michael Holt down there with them. Two and a half minutes to go in this uh, combined pre-83 and Jaguar race. Simon Jeff's still ahead of this battle. Derek Pierce didn't see Mark Cholerton there on the inside. Goes wide now to give him room. There's yellow flags there. Now this is for the lead of the pre-83 touring cars. Mike Luck has got ahead of David Howard. So Luck now in fifth over in fourth overall, and they're catching Colin Philpot as well. The Jaguar's pace has uh, dropped off somewhat. So Mike Luck on for his first win in the pre-83 touring cars overall. He's in a different class to Howard. Mike Luck in Class C, David Howard Class A. That beautiful BMW E21 leads David Howard's Jaguar XJ12. Third is Mark Lucock in the pre-83s. He's sixth overall. Then we've got Mark Osborne's Triumph Dolomites. And then another Jag behind them, which is Tom Lenthal. Mike Luck slides through the old hairpin there. Guy Conyu dealing with back markers at McLean's, getting past the number six of Anton Martin. There is Colin Philpott. He's being caught definitely here by Mike Luck. Last lap time for Luck was 125.9. The jag of Colin Philpott lapping in the 127s. But it's only just over a minute to go, so we're coming towards the conclusion of this uh, first race for the Jaguars and the pre-83s. Mike Luck wants an overall podium here. Through the chicane. Going into their last lap now. James Ram is heading for overall victory. He's 10 seconds up the road ahead of uh, Guy Conyu. We've got a car in the gravel at the old hairpin. Number 97, Graham Smith, has gone off down there. There he is. Had problems in qualifying, and he's now spun it into the gravel down at the bottom end of the circuit out of the race. There is Rick Walker, number 54, with his uh, XJ6 running in 15th place. Try and pick up our race leader. He's coming out of McLean's now on his last lap. Here is James Ram up into Coppice. He is heading for his first overall win of the season, beaten by Tom Robinson at Silverstone. No such problem this time. His uh, rear lights may be stuck on there, but it's not slowing him down. Where did Robinson make it up to? He's up to 14th. It's going to be a win 
for James Ram in the Comsec Investigations Jaguar XJS in the old Motul European Touring Car Championship colours. Here he comes off the final corner up towards the checker flag. Somebody off in the background. That's Johnny Horsfield's Alfa Romeo. But it is a win for James Ram by a clear margin. Our first race for the Jaguars and pre-83s at Donington. Another car has spun at uh, Coppice as well. David Ringham has gone around. And for the pre-83s, it's going to be Mike Luck. There he is. But a battle for second. Mark Lucock has caught David Howard. Alfa Romeo has got running again there. Guy Conyu comes over in second overall. Third is Colin Philpos, and Mike Luck wins the pre-83 touring cars, just ahead of David Howard and Mark Lucock. Behind them, Mark Osborne in the Triumph Dolomites, in a bit of lap traffic there. And a photo finish between Tom Lenthal and Simon Jeffs, seven thousandths of a second, uh, the golf got that. Ahead of uh, Tom Lenthal's Jaguar, Michael Seaborn, after going off earlier on at Cottis, rounds out the top ten. One car we lost on the closing stages there. I noticed Mark Chollerton has pulled off at the side of the circuit there, the 81 car out of it. We've got a replay of some action from the closing stage. Ah, that's what happened to the Alfa Romeo. David Ringham's number 45 Jaguar spun in front of him. And uh, Guy Conyu had to dodge through there in second place. That's what happened to Johnny Horsfield. We saw him go off. And he had to slip and slide his way through the gravel to get out the other side. David Ringham stranded on the inside of the corner. James Ram it is who takes the win then overall. And the pre-83 touring cars go to Mike Luck, the reigning champions, win both their classes then. Pre-83 and Jaguars. James Ram got the fastest lap of the race as well, 123.542. Full credit to Mike Luck there, battling his way past the big jag of David Howard that we see there in the background. Mark Lucock was close as well as they start to head back to Park Fermi. We'll confirm the results in a few moments' time as well. Drivers waving thank you to the marshals and uh, acknowledging the crowd here at Donington Park. We'll take a look at the results then. James Ram, the winner ahead of Guy Conyu by uh, 17 and a half seconds in the end. It was Colin Philpott in third place in uh, his Jaguar XJS. Fourth went to Mike Luck and he won the pre-83 sprint ahead of the uh, split ahead of David Howard. Then Mark Lucock, Mark Osborne, Tom Lenthal and uh, Simon Jeffs, eighth and ninth in the golf and the jag. And behind them, Michael Seaborn rounded out the top ten. Eleventh went to Derek Pierce ahead of in 12th was Tom Robinson made it nicely up from the back of the grid into 12th place 13th was Stephen Primet ahead of Rick Walker and Chris Boone uh, 16th place would have been Mark Cholerton but we lost him on the last lap so it will be Anton Martin classified 16th ahead of Peter Millington then uh, Johnny Horsfield and uh, David Ringham after their late tangle uh, Graham Smith listed behind them, but we saw he was in the gravel, so he won't be classified. Behind them, Keith Evans in the Alpha Sud, Matthew Davis in his Jaguar, Michael Atkinson's Jaguar pulled into the pits uh, late on, and the rest of them were non-finishers. Michael Holt in the gravel, and the remainder of the field did not make it to the line. Great racing there from the uh, Jaguar saloons and GTs plus the uh, pre-83 touring cars. Next up is the Kumho BMW Championship, their first race of the season. Yeah, welcome back down to the pits. We're with our race winner and Mike Luck. Mike, that was... Uh, I'm not sure what word I'm looking for here. Fun is what I'm going to go with. How was, that, how was that for you? It was. It was great fun. It was great fun. I mean, uh, I had a good qualifying, and uh, so I was fairly confident. Uh, didn't make a good start, and uh, so the obviously the Jags in their race, some of them got away, and then obviously Dave Howard in his Jag, which is in our race, uh, got by as well. So it was really a question of 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 you know just ca gradually catching him up I mean I know from previous experience if you push him and push him the tyres will start getting a bit, a bit chewy and a bit lose grip and sure enough he was coming to me and uh, but of course I wasn't going to get him on the straight any of the straights so it was a bit of a bold move on down, down the craners 
um, but uh, squeak by. And, um, and then, of course, it was a question of just dodging the rest of the traffic that we were coming up on. But, uh, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, absolutely, and you've got to be bold on those curves, right? There's no other way to be on, on that part of the track. Well, of course, Dave's got weight, you know, against him, and he's and he can't go, he can't nip down the curves as quick as the little BMW. So, uh, I'm sure whether you'll admit it or not, it was a question of time. It was going to happen. It was just a question of where. Well, a great race from yourself, mate, and uh, best of luck for race two as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, lads, I